So the final portion of our swing is the follow through. Many of you may call this your finish and you've been taught to finish over your shoulder or whatever. But what we want to work on is the natural result, the natural finish of our swing because the racket is continuing toward the target. And so as I come with my shoulder turn into the drop phase to the contact and then my extension, if I extend because the racket is attached to my shoulder by my arm and my shoulder is on my spine, my shoulders are going to continue to turn as my right side continues heading toward the target. You'll notice that as my shoulders turn, it forces the racket to the left side. I'm not swinging my racket to the left side. That's the key thing to understand on your finish. You don't want the racket to just swing to the left side. Notice when I swing to the left side, my hand and my arm have crossed my belly button, crossed my center line. But when I extend, my racket is still to the right of my belly button. And then as I turn, my hand and my arm are still on the right side of my body. The only thing that's happened is my shoulders have turned. The other thing to understand is, so many of you have been told to swing over your shoulder. But what that does is it forces you to actually slow down because if you swing fast, you'll hit your neck. So we slow down. Some of you even catch your racket. The only way you can catch your racket is to slow your swing down. So instead of actually accelerating your racket, you're slowing it down so you can catch it or finish over your shoulder and you don't break your neck. If you turn and the racket starts low, if we have a proper shoulder plane where the racket is going from low to high, the natural tendency will be after it goes high is to come back down low. So the racket goes from low to high and then it comes back down low. That's going to complete a natural swing path. That's going to get our racket back down to here. And if you watch on TV and you see those guys playing on the tour, you'll notice that the racket is finishing around their bicep. Now some of you may say, well, hey, what about Nadal? He finishes over his head. One thing to keep in mind is that the hammer method is not looking at any certain player in particular. We're looking at what is the most efficient and effective manner to hit the ball. The other thing that's worthy to note is that I have filmed and watched hours of Nadal hitting forehands. And primarily, he extends and finishes like this. It's just a few that he'll finish over his head. And most of the time when he finishes over his head, if you actually look, contact has occurred closer to the body. He's a little bit late on the swing, and instead of hitting his face, the racket passes over his head. When he catches the ball out in front and extends through, the racket finishes over here. And so one thing that we want to make sure that we're doing is as we finish our swing and that racket is following through, you want to have a follow through that's proportionate to how hard you hit the ball. And so a lot of you play golf and you may chip a ball. You don't chip and then finish over your shoulder. You have a short swing, you have a short follow through. Same thing in tennis. If I have a slower swing, I have a shorter follow through. So our follow through and our finish is dependent upon how fast we swing and hit our ball.